just spend your time. Yes. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm very honored to be given this opportunity to stand here in front of you today. What you now have accomplished is something that I wouldn't have been able to. I spent way too much time getting ready for college, and I took two very different educations. So by the time I got my master's degree in engineering, I'd spent eight years in higher education, and I was 31 years old. But the new educational reforms a born like me wouldn't have made it. I'd probably be killed by the system. So to all of you, well done for pulling it through. You are about to enter a work life which is going to fill a large part of your life. As engineers, as Thomas said, you are not positioned with highly demanded skill sets and an authority, so you might as well be doing something that you love and something that you are good at. To put yourself in the sweet spot where you're both doing something that you love and that you're good at is not easy. I will, through my personal story, try to reveal some of my experiences and choices that I've made to cut, that might come in handy for you right now when you stand in front of the big ocean with loads of opportunity and loads of choices to make. To the short take home of my story would probably be something like a message inside and it's not all about me. Hopefully my story will inspire you to find your own secret recipe to where you'll position yourself in a spot where you're doing something that you do well and that you love. If all of you manage to do so, you as a group will have a huge impact and probably change our world to the better. This summer I spent some time in the Pacific Ocean surfing. When you spend a lot of time in the ocean, you become like a floating bottle with a message inside. You know you're going somewhere since you have a purpose, but you also know you're at the mercy of the winds and the currents. You realize that you're left with only one good option. Surrender to the surroundings and listen to, avoid, to the message inside. What I'm trying to say here is that it's so easy to be, to be distracted and follow others' path and advice. While studying, everything is taken care of for you. But where you're at right now, the only good compass to the choices you have to make is your own message inside. The easy path is following the late art career path that, that different industries has developed over time. What are the chances that one of these paths is aligned with your message inside? What are the chances that the career path of yesterday will be the tomorrow's path? From now on, intuition tells you a lot more than objective truth. From now on, your intuition tells you a lot more than the objective truth. I had to repeat this fact because it took me the first seven years of my professional career to accept it. Two decades back, I was studying to become a physiotherapist, probably because I wanted to help people in need and because I at the time was doing a lot of sport. While looking into the evidence behind the treatment types physiotherapists had in their toolbox, I realized that the evidence behind the treatment were very poor and the popularity of all the different treatment types changed in time cycles of five to ten years. So each treatment type would go from being 
a treatment that could heal all illnesses and was used by everyone. To a treatment of no use to anybody and back five to ten years later to being the new, new hot thing, maybe with a, not, a new name connected to it. The other thing I realized was the treatment success highly dependent on physiotherapists' social skills and nothing else. The last thing I realized was that, Danish, that the Danish healthcare sector collected humongous loads of data compared to the rest of the world and nobody used the data to anything. Bottom line was that I would never become a good physiotherapist but I saw huge potential in transforming the healthcare sector by pulling out valuable knowledge from already gathered information. I, I finished my physiotherapy studies and went straight on to studying engineering in the field of health informatics. I was introduced to problem-oriented group studies. At the time, I was an egocentric idiot. <coughs> During the first semester, I had a group meeting planned and when I, as usual, showed up 30 minutes late, a girl in the group stood up and asked me if I thought it was okay to waste everybody else's time by showing up late. That was a hard blow to take, but it helped me slowly to recognize the power of good team dynamics. During our studies, we were told that health informatics was very different from other areas of informatics. Health informatics even had, it own, had its own laws. I thought it sounded strange and went to the computer science faculty where I sneaked into some of their classes, realizing that there were 20 year old methods that solved things that by definition was impossible by the health informatics community. After getting through my studies, I couldn't wait to learn new things from smart people in big companies but I got disappointed. If I saw something that could be changed for the better for both the company and, the, and its clients, it was pretty much impossible to pass the changes through because of stupid power hierarchies and internal politics. After five years in two different companies, the only option I was left with, if I shouldn't end up like a grumpy old man, was to start my own, co own company with a friend. I found an inversion with a good friend, so I became a so-called entrepreneur by accident and because I still had a belief that the right team would be but that with the right team it would be possible to change the healthcare sector for the better. Unfortunately, a friendship broke. Inversion was struggling to survive, but on the other hand, we were learning the hard way very quick and at, and at a very, very quick pace both personally and professionally. Have we succeeded? No, we haven't. Will we ever succeed? Probably not. Because our goals are changing every day. To succeed forward in time is hard, but I believe that if you remember to listen to your message inside and deeply connect, not superficially in large networks on social platforms, but in one-on-one -on -one conversation with wise people that dare to com communicate to you off-guarded and speak the truth. One's likelihood of success forward in time will dramatically increase. I'm very lucky to be part of a group of highly talented people in inversion where we are approaching health every day. I'm very honored to say that I love what I do, and most of all, most of the time, I do something that I'm good at. But today, it sort of comes to you. To you. You don't necessarily need to become a Nobel Prize winner or be a big CEO to have a huge impact. You can be a leader in many different spheres. There are many other things I could be doing right now, but I choose to be here in front of you today because I believe in you. I believe that some of you are going to change our community, 
our society, and maybe even the world. One final word. May your lives be filled with passion, and may your days be filled with wonder and happiness. While you are revealing your careers. Thank you. <laughs>